Okay, it feels super weird to be filming right now. A, this is my first video in my new office. B, this is my first video that I'm filming in four weeks. And C, I mean, the nose. Safe to say the nose is uh, pretty different as well. So like I said, this is my very first video that I'm filming in my new office. Keep in mind, this whole setup is very, very temporary. I'm still in the midst of trying to set things up, get things together. Um, everything is still a very much a hot mess. So for my first video back, I wanted to do something that was pretty chill. I thought I would just show you guys the makeup that I have been wearing lately. I did kind of do a bit of a tutorial on Instagram stories. So some of you may have seen this, but I am also going to incorporate a couple other um, new products that I have in my life right now, like the one and only Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I've had so many of you guys tag me on photos of this palette because it is a full cool tone palette and you guys obviously know my love for cool toned eyeshadows. So I'm really excited to play with this. I haven't dug into it yet. So I'm gonna give you guys my first impressions. I'm thinking of doing like, I don't know, a fun smoky eye. I haven't really done any crazy eyeshadow looks lately since my surgery. And then I'm also gonna share with you guys some of my thoughts on the Rare Beauty products. Without further ado, Let's get into it. Okay, I wanna make a quick disclaimer because I know that I'm gonna get some comments about it and it's just really obvious, especially since you guys are so close up to my face, but I'm very well aware that my nostrils are uneven right now. It's just part of the healing process. I'm still very, very swollen, especially from here to here, and my right side is more swollen than my left side, which is why there's asymmetry, but it's going to resolve itself in a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. It just takes a while, so I just wanted to let you know before you let me know. <laughs> so by the way, right now I am filming with just natural light. I don't have my studio lights on. I'm really lucky because the sun never really fully comes into my office. So it's always sunny or there's always like light coming in, but there's no direct sunlight, which is perfect when it comes to filming videos. So I'm thinking, I'm probably gonna be doing more and more natural light videos, which I know you guys really love. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'll definitely still be incorporating my studio lights, especially in the winter when it gets really dark really early, but I'm excited to do more natural light when I'm able to. So my skin is already moisturized. I am though going to spray a little bit of my youth to the people adaptogen, soothe and hydrate activated mist on my skin because I did moisturize like, I don't know, a couple hours ago. And so I want my skin to be freshly moist <laughs> if you didn't know which i would be surprised if you didn't because it's all i've been talking about especially on instagram and i did just upload a vlog all about it but i did just get a rhinoplasty um and i mentioned in my vlog as well as on my stories that my skin type has kind of shifted a little bit not permanently so don't get nervous if you follow me specifically because i have dry skin because my skin is gonna get back to as it normally is but from my surgery, my skin has been a little bit more on the oily side lately, which has never happened to me in my life. I'm so used to having desert dry skin that the fact that I have any type of oil coming through, it's the best. I, I kind of love it. So even though this is temporary, I have had to kind of like shift the way I've been doing my makeup and change up the products as well because my skin gets so oily throughout the day right now. But even though my skin has been a little bit more on the oily side, I still obviously do prep my skin with a lot of moisture beforehand because no matter what, my makeup always looks better when I do. For my foundation, I have been using pretty much only the Rare Beauty, what are you even called? I don't, I'm not, oh my God, it's made in Canada. I did not know that. I just saw a little sticker on bottom here. That's so cool. Um, so anyways, the Rare Beauty Foundation is the only foundation that I've been putting on my face. I find, especially because my skin is a bit more on the oily side right now, it works especially well for my skin because it is kind of like a soft, matte, natural finish. And I find it does a really good job at not making my skin look overly oily but still giving me a really nice skin like finish and it's very very thin in texture so i find that it doesn't look heavy on the skin and i find it gives me just really good coverage and the exact look that i'm looking for when it comes to my foundation and then beyond that it lasts so well throughout the day like i can spend 12 hours wearing this i could wear a mask and yes there is a little bit of transfer that happens but i still find that it doesn't look gross and cakey and crusty but at the end of the day it still looks really nice and fresh but before i apply that i am going to put on the rare beauty primer I have been using this as well quite often um, I do like this because it is a glowy primer but it's not like super glowy at all it really just gives like 
a healthy sheen to the skin. I would even call it much of a glow. And it also gives a nice amount of moisture. And I did watch the Skin by Hi Hiram video um, where he reviewed some of the Rare Beauty face products and he mentioned that there were some really good skincare ingredients in here as well, which I found to be pretty impressive. So I've been really liking it for my base. It's really nice and kind of like a medium thick texture. So it just gives a nice layer to the skin. And you see it gives a nice glow too. But again, not like shimmery, not super glowy, just a healthy sheen. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna go into the foundation. The shade that I've been using is 210N. I feel like it does match me pretty perfectly. And I'm gonna shake it up. I just kind of dot it all over my face. And of course, down the nose. And I have been using a sponge just because I do find that it gives a really nice natural finish. And I find it blends and melts into the skin really nicely with the sponge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap that out. So because I am only four weeks post-op, my nose is still pretty sensitive. So I need to be really, really careful when I blend out the foundation. I'm like barely able to touch my nose and it still feels super weird. Okay, so I think because I want to do kind of like a smokier look, I'm going to do my concealer after my eyeshadow. So I'm going to jump right into my eyeshadow. This is what the Glam Palette looks like. The one thing that I really, really don't like about this palette before even touching the eyeshadows is the way that they laid it out, especially with the, the the naming of each eyeshadow. So they basically named each eyeshadow based off of where they feel like you should put it on your eyes. So there's multiple center eyelid, outer eyelid, inner corner, lash line, blend, smoke, shades. It's super, super weird. I really just don't like that, first of all, because I feel like it kind of hinders your creativity a little bit. Like it, it tells you what it feels like you should do with the eyeshadow, which you can't tell me what to do, you're not my real dad, so I don't know why you're even trying. But maybe I don't wanna put this crease shade in my crease, and also, this type of shade will not work in the crease for every single skin tone, so I just feel like it's kind of like an odd choice for a naming system for a palette. I really don't like that about it. So that is like my first criticism about this palette, but let's just kind of try and overlook that for now, and let's actually just get into applying and see how that works. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go in with this shade right here. It is called Crease, but I am gonna use it as my transition shade. I am also going to blend on the outer corner as well. And when I have a lot less on my brush, I'm just gonna bring it a little bit higher to make sure that it's nice and diffused. You guys, I gotta say, it feels so weird to be filming for the first time in a new space. I'm kind of really weird when it comes to where I film and like the times that I film at and who's like near me when I film. Like I'm very particular. And I'm definitely a creature of habit. So when I'm taking out of my comfort zone, so to speak, it takes a long time for me to get used to it. But you know, sometimes I have days where like I cannot form a full sentence and it takes forever for me to film because I just can't speak properly. And I thought that today would be that day, especially because I haven't really filmed a video in a while, but I feel just so calm and chill. And I feel like everything is just flowing really nicely. And maybe it's because this space is just awesome. <laughs> I'm having slight issues with the space though. <sighs> there, there are like sound issues when the people who are below me, because this is in a building, like it's not just like a standalone office, um, when the people below me speak really loudly for whatever reason, like I can hear it like they're in my office. So we're likely going to have to do some soundproofing on the floors, so like insulate them and put new flooring on top because the floors that I currently have are like the original flooring. So I think as soon as I put a little bit of soundproofing, the new flooring, and then even rugs on top of that, it's gonna be perfect but um, I'm, it's definitely stressing me out a little bit because I love this space so much and I don't want anything to be wrong with it. And that, like when it happens, it makes it impossible for me to film. Cause it's not just like somebody's walking past and I can hear murmuring, it is like they're in my office and it would, you guys would be able to hear it. So it's not good and I'm really hoping that um, we'll be able to find a solution and once we find the solution, that the solution will actually work. 
So fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go into the shade blend and I am going to actually use it to blend. So I'm gonna just take that on a clean fluffy brush and just buff along the top edge. This is a little bit more of like a neutral warmer shade and I do always like to put some more neutral warm shades in with my cool looks because I find that it kind of grounds it a little bit more and it makes it a touch more wearable because I think the thing with cold, with cool, cool toned looks compared to warm toned looks is they could be a little bit stark. And so if you feel like that's the case for you, just putting kind of like a bit of a warmer or more neutral shade in the crease as that like your transition shade is gonna warm it up enough to kind of bring it down a notch. Okay, so for my lid, I wanna do something really dark and smoky. Mm, and I'm going between either smoke or lash line. I really like the lash line shade, this guy right in the middle because it's like super nice and cool tone. I'm gonna apply that with this guy. This is my Sigma Detail Blending. Um, I really like this because it's flat, but still kind of fluffy. Normally with like these really, really deep shades, it can get a little bit patchy if the formula is not good, but I mean, this is Natasha Denona you are paying a premium for her palette, so you would expect to get a beautiful, seamless blend with an eyeshadow like this. And that's what I'm getting. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like no black falling, which is amazing. I probably could have put my concealer on. It's pretty unusual actually with such a dark color. Now that that's done, I am going to put on a little bit of shimmer on the lid. I think I'm gonna do this guy right here called Inner Corner. Um, it has a bit more of a silvery undertone. I was gonna do this guy, but this is a bit more of like a champagne, and I want something purely cool tone, so I'm gonna go with this guy. And I am going to apply this with my finger and just kind of tap it all over the lid. I kind of imagine the shade to be more glittery than just like sheeny metallic and I don't have any of my eyeshadow toppers with me in the studio right now so unfortunately this is gonna have to be the look that we're gonna have to go with but I still think it's pretty. Just to add like a little bit more dimension I'm gonna go into this shade right here. It's called Inner Corner. It just looks like to be the most reflective color in the palette. It does have more of a pink tone though and I am going to just pop that right in the center because Something that glitter would give me would be like that really pretty dimension. And I feel like it's lacking that. So by putting this just in the center, it's gonna give that highlight. And I feel like that makes a big difference. Okay, for my eyeliner, I am gonna go in with my Rare Beauty Liquid Eyeliner. I'm kind of like undecided about this. I'm not sure if I love it or if I hate it. It is definitely a much bigger felt tip liquid liner situation. So there's some instances where I really like that because I find I'm able to get like a nice line pretty quickly with it. But I also feel like because it is pretty big, it can get just a little bit messy, a little bit too quickly for my liking. And it's just not quite as precise as I would like. But then on the other hand, sometimes it is really precise. So I don't know, it kind of depends on how I am with my eyeliner on that particular day, but I'm just like unsure about it still. But either way, I'm going to do a nice thin line across my lash line and I'm going to do a little wing as well. Okay, so that application was actually perfect and it was super, super easy to do. So today was a good eyeliner day. So when I don't do eyeliner for a really long time, I find it takes so long for me to get back on the horse, the eyeliner horse, so to speak, and be able to actually do it without completely messing it up. And I'm still not fully back on the horse. I have like maybe one leg over it, but it's not perfect, okay? <laughs> Don't judge me. Okay, so now that we have the top lid done, I am going to go in with my concealer. So again, going back into my Rare Beauty concealer, I have been really, really liking this concealer. I will say though, with this doe foot applicator, you get a lot of product right off the bat. So I always like wipe off pretty much all of it. <laughs> and I just take whatever is left over on the little applicator and I use that to apply because it's so full coverage and with this stuff you really just need a small amount you don't need to like pile it on so i'm just gonna blend that out with my beauty blender honestly at first i wasn't really too sure about this concealer i thought that it was a little bit drying the more i used it the more i actually really really liked it it's not like a super hydrating concealer that's for sure i do find that it does do a really good job of really airbrushing the under eye and this also lasts so well throughout the day, similar to the foundation. And I do find that the concealer and the foundation, because they are kind of 
made to match with each other. They're both 210N. They just mesh so well together. I'm gonna also just take a little bit down the bridge of my nose, which is so fun. Okay, you guys know that like, I never, ever, ever highlighted or really contoured my nose. I would highlight it. Like I would do the little thing down the bridge of my nose, but I didn't really do that so much for contouring and highlighting. Like I did that more so to like disperse the brightness throughout my face because I really just never liked to contour my nose. I just always found that it looked kind of weird on my nose. Um, I just never felt like it looked natural. Um, and I have been playing around with contouring my new nose. <laughs> And it's so much fun. I am going to just quickly set a little bit my face. I'm actually gonna use this new Hourglass Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder. I haven't used this yet. It looks like a translucent powder, but it has a little bit of like a yellowy tint to it, like the slightest, slightest hint. And it does have a really nice sheen to it as most Hourglass powders do. So I'm excited to see how this is gonna look on the skin. So I'm gonna just take this dual ended Hourglass brush. I'm gonna take the pointy side and just put a little bit underneath the eyes. I've pretty much been powdering my entire face. Um, and I know this is wild and crazy. Who am I? I don't know. But I just feel like it is really necessary for me right now because number one, um, with the mask wearing, like my foundation just gets all over it. And if I don't powder, it, I mean, it, it gets so much worse. And so I find that powder really just does help. And also, like I said, I've been getting a little bit oily. I feel like I'm like offending my dry skin viewers right now and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but all I've been doing is I've just been taking like a fluffy brush like this and I've been going into my powder and instead of like packing it on my skin, I'm really just buffing it very lightly. Like, I'm barely even touching my face. I just want a very, very thin dusting of powder, especially in this area where I do wear my mask to just minimize the transfer as much as possible and to also minimize shine. Who am I? <laughs> And I find that it doesn't make my skin look like super heavy or super cakey and I still have a nice glow. Like it doesn't get rid of it. But um, especially with a powder like this, that's so lightweight and it's not really totally meant to like mattify, you're not gonna get like a cakey look. So yeah, this, this powder looks great by the way. Like it looks pretty much invisible on my skin. And like I said, it still kept that glow. If anything, maybe it added a little bit more, which I like. So I am going to put some shadow on my lower lash line. So I'm just gonna take this little brush from Smith. It's my 253. And I'm gonna go back into this shade, the first shade that we used and just buff that on my lower lash line. Whenever I do a really, really smoky look, you always have to balance it out. Well, you don't always have to, that's silly, but I personally always like to balance it out on the lower lash line just by adding a bit of a shadow there because I find it just makes the look look more complete and balanced. And I'm taking a clean brush, with nothing on it, and I'm just gonna buff along the lower lash line just to diffuse it and make it look really nice and soft. See how much bigger my eyes look now since applying that? It makes a huge difference. And man, cool tones make the brown eyes pop. Okay, I am gonna apply a inner corner highlight and I think I'm actually gonna go into the Cool Tone Silver called Inner Corner, the first one that we applied on the lid and pack that on the inner corner of the eye. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of that onto my brow bone and just blend it with my finger a bit. So now I'm going to curl my lashes and apply my mascara. I'm gonna be using my M Cosmetics Pick Me Up, one of my favorites currently. Curling my lashes though has been like a huge part of my routine lately. I used to skip it all the time and not really care so much about curling my lashes, but it really does make the biggest difference. So now I'm gonna just quickly do my brows. I'm just gonna go into my Marc Jacobs Brow Wow Duo. I'm gonna start off first with the brow gel. Okay, um, my brows are very intense. Um, <laughs> they look a little bit crazy. I don't know what happened. Again, like I feel so out of practice. So everything is just like 10 times more difficult right now for whatever reason, but whatever, I'm just gonna go with it. So now it's time to bronze up my skin. I'm going to be using this Dior bronzer, the Dior Skin Mineral Nude Bronze Color Games. I've been really, really liking this. It's a really nice, pretty sheer product. So it is quite buildable. But I do like that because I find that it gives a pretty natural look. And I really like the color of it too. It just warms up the skin beautifully. So I'm just gonna apply that with this Sigma Tapered Face. I always find with a cool toned eye look specifically, like really, really bronze skin is super pretty because the warmth of the skin just offsets the cool toned eyes and it just makes everything pop more. So I'm gonna go kind of ham with the bronzer. 
Okay, so now that we're bronzed, I'm going to go in with blush and I'm going to use one of the Rare Beauty cream blushes. These are so beautiful, but they're very, 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 very pigmented and very, 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 very intense. So you gotta be really, really careful with them. I think for this look today, what am I feeling? I kind of wanna do this color because I feel like it kind of picks up the warmth in the crease really nicely. And again, I like warm cheeks with cool toned eyes. I just find it works well together. Um, so with the Rare Beauty blushes, you wanna be so careful with them. I'm again, wiping off all the excess product and putting it on the back of my hand like that. And I'm going to dot it with my finger first where I want it. This is one pat, okay, into the product that I put on my hand. Like look how much more is still left. It's a lot, like I said, it's very intense. And I'm going to use a sponge and blend that out. So you do set down to kind of like a powdery finish. So you actually do have to kind of work quickly. As you can see, I didn't work quickly enough and it kind of left a bit of a stain effect on my cheek. So I will say these, although they are beautiful, I don't find them to be very like beginner friendly or super easy to work with. You gotta be so finicky and careful with them because they are so crazy pigmented. But if you're able to get used to like the crazy pigmentation and the way that these apply, it is a really gorgeous blush. I mean, look how pretty that color is specifically. And I really don't have any other cream blush that is even close to the shade. So I love a good unique color. We're pretty much done guys. The last thing that I got to do are the lips. And I think this is probably what I'm most excited about because I have not been able to stop obsessing over these new Tower 28 glosses. Don't even get me started. Like I'm going to be ranting about these in a positive way <laughs> for like minutes. Like editing Jamie is going to be pissed because I'm going to be going on and on about them. You're not wrong. <laughs> Specifically the shade Cashew. I may or may not have said that this is my all-time favorite gloss I've ever put on my lips. I know it's a bold statement. For me, this is the perfect neutral everyday gloss. It's the perfect tone, the perfect level of opacity, the perfect color, uh, the perfect amount of glossiness, the perfect comfortability. Is that a word? I don't know. That's all I gotta say about that. Gloss drop. So I think I'm going to just swatch all four shades for you guys on camera, just because why not? By the way, this is called the Milky Collection and they're all named after like vegan milk. So there's oat, cashew, almond, and coconut, which I think is amazing. A really, really smart idea. Anyways, this is oat. It's a nice light peachy shade. It's the lightest color in the bunch. Super, super pretty. I really like this because even though it is light, it's not so opaque where it makes your lips look like concealer lips. So it does definitely make it a little bit more wearable, but how pretty is this one? This is coconut, which is the pink. The perfect pink cloth, really. I love it. It's like not too Barbie pink, but it's just pink enough. It's perfect. Next we have almond, which is like the brown nude. Even though it does look deep in the in the tube, it doesn't translate to be super, super deep on the lips because it is more on the sheer side. But obviously it does still have that little hint of color. Super, super pretty. I actually really like this color for this look, but I am gonna go with my ultimate favorite, which is Cashew. So now I'm gonna line my lips with the M Cosmetics Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner in the shade Teddy. And I am gonna take my finger and kind of just smudge it so it's not harsh on the inner part of my lip. Now we're gonna go in with the one and only Cashew. Can you understand why I'm just so obsessed with this lip color? Ugh, it makes me angry, it's so good. I actually almost forgot we needed to apply highlighter. I have been applying a powder highlighter recently, again, who am I? So these new Vesca highlighters, they're called the Stargaze Luminous Glow Highlighting Powders, are really nice because they do kind of give the look of a cream highlighter, but in a powder form. So I'm gonna use the shade Moonlight and just kind of buff it right at the tops of my cheekbones. I find, especially when I like really buff it into the skin, it just gives such a gorgeous glossy effect that's not unflattering. And I could take my little pinky finger. And I'm gonna go like this. Boop. Boop. <laughs> I definitely feel very fall right now. 
feel very cozy in my little turtleneck and my smoky eyes. <laughs> All right guys, that finishes off today's video. I had so much fun doing this. What a great video to start off um, this new chapter in my new filming space, my new office. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down below all of your thoughts on everything that I used today on the look that I created. And also give me, give me some, some like design inspo. What do you guys want to see behind me as far as like every single time I film? <laughs> I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.